welcome to this Price a Job tutorial. In this video, we'll explain through an example how to use the Timber Roof Joists Calculator to BS5268. Initially, we'll go to the top navigation blue toolbar and open the Engineering tab. Then, browse to the Module toolbar, where we can select from a variety of different engineering modules. And here we can open the Flat Roof Joist category, where we have options for No Access or With Access. And we'll select the Flat Roof Joist With Access module, but either one is fine as we'll have the option to change this within the module later. The module appears in the left sidebar within this folder titled Structure by Default. We can click on the pencil icon to rename the module folder to something more project relevant, such as Extension. Next to the module itself, we can click on the three dots to open the module options menu. Here we can rename, duplicate, move, or delete the selected module. So let's rename this module to something more specific to the calculation we're about to do, such as flat roof joist number one, and save. And now we can start the timber design. At the top right hand pane, we can select whether we have a flat roof joist with access or flat roof joist without access. So here we can either confirm or change our choice when we initially selected the module from the toolbar. A flat roof without access is a roof that circulation is not allowed, except for access for maintenance and repair. A flat roof with access is a roof that circulation is allowed. Then we choose the type of roof structure that we have. Options include glass reinforced plastic or GRP, three layers of built up felt, a rubber roof or EPDM, single ply membrane, or lead coat of 5, 6, or 7. For this example, we'll select a single ply membrane. Then we can enter the clear span, and this should be in millimeters. In this example, we will use 4000 millimeters. We can use the slider to adjust to our desired measurement, or simply input the numeral manually. Then we can enter the roof joist spacing. This is also in millimeters. Usually we choose 400 millimeters center to center. However, we also have options for 300, 450, or 600 millimeters. Next, we can select the strength grade. This is the timber strength, or timber grade as we call it. Usually we choose C16 or C24 for softwood. We'll select C24. For bearing length, we recommend using a bearing length of at least 100 millimeters. Sometimes longer bearing is required to satisfy the bearing stress check, which we can see here in the results summary. The maximum deflection is recommended to be set at 0.003 multiplied by the clear span, or a preset value of 14 millimeters. The calculator will use the minimum of these two values. Utilization limit is recommended to be set at 99%. We have a special video for the utilization limit explanation in our other tutorials. The service class for timber roof joists is usually set as class 2. There are three different service classes. Class 1 is when we have a heated and dry environment. Class 2 is when we have a cold and dry environment. And class 3 is when the timber is exposed to weather. We'll leave this set at class 2. Next we can look at the loading inputs. This is where we answer the question, what are the timber roof joists going to support? For the roof joists, this is usually a standard calculation. If it is a flat roof with access, then we will use 1.8 kN as a concentrated imposed loading, and 1.5 kN per square meter uniformly distributed imposed live loading. These are not applied together. So either the 1.8 kN concentrated loading will be applied, or the 1.5 kN per square meter uniformly distributed imposed loading. Now for the dead loading, we can conservatively use a value between 0.55 to 0.6 kN per square meter, or use the calculator to calculate the exact dead loading, in this case 0.52. We can easily call up the appropriate values using the templates in the drop down menu located at the top of this stage. In this case, we use the flat roof with access and price job calculates the dead loading to be 0.52 kN per square meter. If you need to add any extra rows here, you can do so by clicking the plus add row button. For example, we might add a row here for plywood with a dead load of 0.12 kN. And then we can use the grab handles on the left side here to reorder these rows however we wish. Also, price job makes it even easier by allowing you to access a library of templates by clicking the template button. Then you can browse through the categories, including boarding, timber, insulation, finishes, 
roof coverings, masonry, concrete, and imposed loads such as furniture or snow. So we'll take a look at the boarding category and select a material. In this case, we might choose 18 millimeter plywood. And that is added to our loading. And the load presets are automatically added for us. And now that we have a duplicate load here, we can delete the unnecessary row by clicking the bin icon on the right. You can change any of these values manually or change the template. But for this example, we'll leave the updated template as is. If we expect to use these same inputs again in the future, we may want to save this as a new template. We can do that by clicking the template drop down menu and scrolling to the very bottom to our custom list. And then we can save this as a template. Let's give our custom template a custom name for easy identification. We'll just say with plywood and save. And now when we return to our templates drop down menu, when we scroll to the bottom to our custom list, we have our new custom template flat roof with access with plywood. If we no longer need any of these templates, we can delete it by clicking the bin icon and then confirm the deletion. We can then reopen the templates menu to scroll down to our custom list to see that our deletion was successful. Now, if we are designing a flat roof without access, then we would use 0.9 kilonewtons as a concentrated imposed loading and 0.75 kilonewtons per square meter uniformly distributed imposed loading, unless we are in Scotland, North England, or 100 meters above sea level. In these regions, the snow loading is greater and hence we use 1.0 kilonewtons per square meter. These are not applied together, so either the 0.9 kilonewtons concentrated loading will be applied or the uniformly distributed imposed loading will be applied. For our example, we'll be using a flat roof joist with access. Next, we have a checkbox for show load details. If you click this checkbox for show load details, then the load details will be included in the structural calculations report. And we can see this table here in the description under the loading details. If you uncheck this box, then the loading details will not be included in the report. We'll leave this checked. Next, we'll take a look at the section. Basically, there are two different cases. Either we know the size of the timber roof joists from the beginning, or we can use the auto search feature. The first process in which we know the size of the timber roof joists is called timber roof joists check. The second process in which we don't know the size of the timber roof joists is called timber roof joists design. The auto search feature will help us optimize the timber roof joists width and depth. If we unclick auto search, then we can choose the width and depth that we want. In this example, we'll select 50 millimeters width and 225 millimeters depth. Based on the rest of the input of the previous sections, if we click auto search only for the depth, then the calculator optimizes the depth for a given width, in this case, 50 millimeters. And based on the rest of the input of the previous sections, if we click the auto search only for the width, then the calculator optimizes the width for a given depth, in this case, 195 millimeters. Next, we'll take a look at the results. In the top of the description pane, we can see a summary of the results. In the following sections, we can see the design data, the loading details, including the loading details table, which we have selected to show with this checkbox, and also the factors, the section properties, and the structural checks in detail. Regarding the results summary, you can see that in the long term, medium term, and short term, all checks have a status of pass. Also, we can see the utilization factors. It is worth mentioning that for this type of structural calculation, it is the deflection that usually governs the design. This can be seen in the utilization factor. Hence, when the timber roof joists are not spanning a short distance, we should always have a look at the deflection check which is a structural check that usually governs the design. Now that this flat roof timber joist is done, if you have the same calculation for another flat roof timber joist, instead of starting all over again from scratch, you can save a lot of time by simply clicking the three dots next to the module here to open the options menu and select duplicate module. Now you can just rename this new module for the next flat roof joists, and we'll call this one flat roof joists with access number two and save. And then we can modify the new values for the new flat roof joists. When you are ready, you can click on the reports tab here at the top of the left sidebar. And here you'll see the structural calculations page. If you click export as PDF, you'll see that your logo will appear automatically show the top of the preview. And you can customize this as needed. 
At the bottom of the report, there is a section for adding notes, which you can input manually by clicking on the pencil icon and inputting your notes in the field. However, to speed things along, you might find it useful to import a note by using the import note here in the bottom left. And this opens Price of Jobs Notes template library, where you can select from a variety of categories, including legal fees, services, finishes, substructures, structural members, and general. Or you could add new categories if you'd prefer. To add a note from the templates, simply select the category and then click the note you wish to add. This note is then added to the notes field. We'll just correct that by by adjusting the editor here, and amend this from steel beams to roof joists. If we'll be using this new note frequently in the future, we can simply copy this and add a new note to the template library. Simply paste our new note here and save. And now this new note has been added to the template library. And if we wish to add it to our notes section, we can just click the arrow to add it to our notes. Here under substructure, we see another good example and we can see that this is particularly handy for adding legal disclaimers. Once we're finished, we can close these windows and we see that our notes have been added to our report. You can also combine the structural calculations page with a cover page and cover letter, both of which you can customize to show either detailed or simple information. And for your cover letter, you can type whatever you want here and then save it as a template by clicking the three dots here next to template. Here you can give your new template a name and save it for future reuse. And all of your templates will be stored here in this drop down menu. When you're done customizing, you can print the complete report or export it as a PDF or export it as a Word document or email it to your client directly from within Price a Job. And that's how to use the Timber Flat Roof Joist Calculator to BS5268. Thank you for using Price a Job.